This video clearly isn't made for Google. I don't think there's anybody in the world that is typing into Google, who is this crazy Brit in Italy? No, this video is made for you, the community who have followed me for nearly two years on this YouTube journey, who have watched my videos, commented, shown me lots of support. Today's video gives you a deeper insight into who I am as a person, and also I answer some of your questions, both from Instagram and my YouTube community tab, to give you a better insight into behind the scenes of Miss Brittley. Because I think sometimes we see one particular side of a person for YouTube, but you don't necessarily get to see other aspects of their character. And today I wanted to show you a deeper insight into the making of Miss Brittley. The first question that I'm often asked is, why did I choose to move to Italy? Now, I've already filmed a video all about this. I'll pop the link up here. But essentially, I fell in love with this country and I felt a connection and an inner knowing that this was where I was meant to be. And I kind of feel in life that sometimes you don't have to have a logical explanation for following your passions or your dreams. If it feels right to you and it's something that, um, you feel that you are called to do then absolutely you need to follow that passion and that dream um, it may not always be easy but there's a reason that you thought of that in the first place and i kind of feel that sometimes we don't listen to ourselves enough when it comes to these situations and we try to look for logical reasons as to why we should do what we need to do but this just felt right and i know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people but the more I've, time I've spent here in Italy, the more I understand that I was definitely destined to spend time here, living here, being in this country. And it's quite interesting because during the course of this time, I've looked back and I've seen signs and synchronicities that have shown me that this was the path that I was meant to take. And I talk a lot more about them in that video. So after this, make sure you watch it. But also I've recently found out that perhaps potentially there may be some Italian heritage way back in my family. My grandmother's father, to be precise, potentially might have some Italian gin. We're not sure. I have to do some investigating. This might be something that I do for next year. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because I felt a calling to live here. I followed it. And then, you know, four years later, we discover this. So, yeah, quite interesting, I think. So what motivates me? What inspires me? I think creativity. I love to be creative. I love to write. I love to express myself. I think what motivates me is the ability to create my dreams and the ability to carve out the life that I want for myself. I think it can be very difficult sometimes when you live in a place, especially where people have a very different way of thinking and perhaps a more realistic or practical and inverted commas way of thinking. I'm definitely an out of the box kind of person. I am definitely somebody who will want to make what seems impossible possible. And I want to hold on to that because I think it's a bit of magic really. I don't want to be one of those people that gets caught up in the practicalities and realism of life and never actually fulfills their true potential. I want to be the person that does that crazy stuff that people think can never happen or be possible and actually create that for myself. And I think that is what drives me and motivates me to create things, to, I love to help people as well. There's definitely an element of helping people in everything that I've done up until this point and everything that I want to do in the future. I want to create for people. I want to help people. And so there's an act of service in there as well that drives me too. But essentially it's these things. So what are some things that really annoy me? Two-faced people really annoy me. I'm a very direct, straightforward person and I would much prefer that somebody tells me to my face if they aren't happy with something that I've done rather than be really sweet and unassuming on the outside and then the moment your back is turned, talk about you. Like, I really don't like that kind of behaviour and I'm very direct. So I much prefer people be the same with me. And I think sometimes in Italy, you don't always get that. You get the extreme niceties and the pleasantries from people, but they do not necessarily represent what they really think of you. It's likely that when your back is turned, somebody is saying something different. Um, and trust me, I've seen that myself over the course of four years. So that's one thing that I really dislike. Also, I just dislike disrespect. I kind of think that I've experienced my fair share of disrespect living here, particularly to do with work situations in the past, not 
now. And I kind of feel like, you know, karma is a big thing. I believe massively in karma and I can honestly sit here now and say that all the people that I know have wronged me in my life have absolutely had karma come back and pay them a visit like in some way shape or form it happens I've had karma come and pay me a visit when I've mistreated people in the past so it's a thing and so I kind of feel like now when people behave in a way that shows disrespect or in a way that I just don't understand I kind of am like okay it doesn't matter because karma's coming like you can't escape it and I absolutely love Taylor Swift's single karma because 100% everything she says about in that song is true like karma is real and you just can't hide from it so why did I start my YouTube channel if you're not familiar with my journey I spent the best part of a year and a bit living here in Italy unable to communicate properly and as much as that has continued to some extent up until kind of where I'm at now in my life um, YouTube for me was the perfect opportunity for me to express my personality and talk about my experiences and it's something that I am so happy that I began and it's something that's taught me a lot of patience because YouTube is not something that you can build a community from or an empire from in a day, it takes time. There's something super rewarding about taking the time to build a community and to have people come back and comment on your videos and I start to recognize the names and the people who are part of my community, that is so much more rewarding than just like an Instagram like. Like I cannot even begin to tell you, it's two completely different feelings. And so YouTube for me has enabled me to connect with people and has enabled me to share my story and help essentially other people who are planning to move to Italy. And it's really, something that I'm so happy that I began and I cannot wait to develop further into 2023. What do I have planned for 2023? This is such a good question. I think that I have so much planned. I'm writing my second book, which I have a deadline of spring to have it ready and prepare for publishing. Um, and of course, it's all about Italy this time. So it's not my personal story, which my first one was about. This is about my time in Italy. And I think, you know, if you enjoy watching my channel, you would definitely enjoy reading this book. And also I have something very amazing that I'm launching in January, which I'm so excited about. I'm in the process of working on it at the moment. So stay tuned for that. And there's just more I want to do with this YouTube channel next year. I want to just generally hone in on my brand and really create some amazing things for you so that you can really get to understand what it's like to live here in Italy, to create massive change in your life, um, because essentially you do that when you decide to move to Italy. And yeah, just to continue sharing my experiences with you all. So there are some amazing things planned for next year and I'm really excited. So what are three things that I do every day without foul? First of all, drink coffee. I drink between three to four cups of coffee every single day, espressos love them i cannot believe it because in the uk i never used to drink coffee at all very rarely i was a real tea drinker so there's that um secondly i do like a magical morning gratitude practice with one of my friends back in the uk every day or i try to it's been a bit challenging recently with my workload but essentially i try to do that every day because it grounds me and it keeps me connected with people that i know back in the uk as well and thirdly I do my best to read every day and tap. If you watch this video here, you will understand a bit more of my morning routine, which I talk about in this video, because it really gives me structure to my day. But essentially, I find that if I want to grow and develop in my mindset, I have to adopt habits that support that. And essentially, my morning routine does that. It's my magical morning, it's my tapping, it's reading. It's stuff that is fueling me to give me the energy and the correct mindset for the day ahead. So yeah, they are the things that I do every single day without foul. Most times, it depends very much on my workload. Okay, so now I want to answer some questions that you beautifully asked me, both on Instagram and on my community tab on YouTube. So we're gonna start with some of the questions from Instagram. And Sally Squiggles wrote, how are you finding life in Palermo in comparison to Salerno? This is a very, <laughs> very good question. Um, they are two completely different cities. And I feel in a way, um, it has taken me now like four months to fully adjust to living here in Palermo. Consider Salerno was the first place that I moved to and I spent the entire time that I've lived in Italy in that city. So I became very familiar with the surroundings, with the way of life, with, with everything. I became very comfortable in that city. 
to move to another city it is always going to be daunting. You're always going to have a period of adjustment. But I feel Palermo has kind of like shaken me up like you do with a friggin' salt shaker. And like, ooh, left me feeling like I've been hung out to dry. But in all of the best ways possible. <laughs> I think, honestly, life in Palermo is is rugged, it's raw. It's nothing like Salerno. Salerno to me is like a sleepy suburb. It's a beautiful city, but essentially life is the same. I could go back to Salerno in two years time and there might be some you know, minor changes, maybe some shops have changed hands or you know, uh, an aspect of the, of the scenery might be different, but essentially the city will always be the same. It's got that vibe to it. Whereas Palermo, oh my goodness, it's ever evolving, it's ever changing. And honestly, it's not a perfect city by any means. I think the side that the tourists see compared to the side that you see when you live here, they are two very different aspects. Lots of things frustrate me here. Bureaucracy is, oh, it's a complete nightmare. This is something that I haven't experienced up to now. I've had a fairly smooth run with my bureaucracy here in Italy, but I think again, that was because I was in Salerno, which compared to Palermo, is a lot more organized for bureaucracy, believe it or not. But I realize here that you have to be super strong. Like even when you cross the road, oh my goodness, I used to talk about this in Salerno, but it's nothing compared to Palermo. You've got to be like ready to have a fight to cross the road so that you don't get run over. Like. It's extreme here, but there's an energy and there's a life in Palermo that I just never experienced in Salerno. And I feel like I needed this period of adjustment from like late July when I first came here to Palermo to now we're in the middle of December to really get myself used to being here. It's an amazing city. There is always something happening, which I'm not used to because it wasn't like that in Salerno. There is, a real dynamic here like you have Prada and Gucci at one end on Via Liberta and then you have like the markets and the poorer parts and in inverted commas I should say of Palermo on the other spectrum so it's a completely diverse city which the most similar I can compare it to is Naples definitely it's definitely got an, a, a Napoli vibe going on here but it's amazing, the food is incredible, the weather. I cannot believe it was 25 degrees centigrade like two days ago. This is December, like I'm not used to this. Salerno was a lot colder, it rained a hell of a lot more and there was always a wind, like always a strong wind. We used to say it was a wind that used to slap you around the face. It was exactly like that, whereas here it's lovely. It, like, it really is beautiful, the weather. We have a few rainy days, a bit of a rainy spell, but then you have sunshine and 25 degree centigrade temperatures in December. Like, I think you can suffer the balance. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing city. Like, there's so much history here. I feel like I've only just scratched the surface of what there is to explore. And I think I will enjoy this city more once I get more of a balance in my life, because at the moment I work tremendously hard and I really have to try to find time even to do YouTube and follow my passions and create all the things I'm doing on the side. So for this, when I find my balance, I think I will definitely get to appreciate this city more. But honestly, for the life, for the vibrancy, for the diversity, for, for so many aspects, this is an incredible city. And I think, you know, it's just taken me a bit of time to get used to it because I was kind of perhaps living in a bit of a daydream before in Salerno, like sleepwalking my way through life. It's an amazing place, but I think um, here is where you really grow in Palermo and you really find yourself because it's such a hectic, chaotic city. Okay, my next question from Instagram. Heard a lot that Sicily is not a safe place. Is it true? Sicily is a city like any other in the world. Like you're gonna have its good parts and its bad parts. And I think you just have to be street savvy when you come here. Of course, if you choose to go into some of the side streets late at night, displaying expensive camera equipment or mobile phones, you might happen across a problem. But generally speaking, I feel safe here. And I have felt safe the whole time that I've lived in Italy, even when I was going into Naples, and Naples has got a very bad reputation as well. I just think you have to be street savvy. This is the bottom line. If you're gonna leave expensive phones unattended on tables, 
of course you're going to have a problem and I, I talk about this in this video right here because I talk about the mistakes that I've seen tourists make and honestly like it's very easy to give a city a bad reputation but if you don't look after your stuff or you're not street savvy whose fault is it you know like every city has its problems Palermo is no different to anywhere else I've definitely seen more evidence of crime here in Palermo than perhaps I did in Salerno like street crime a car theft I, I'm hearing a lot more of this kind of stuff happening here but it's a big city what do you expect London is exactly the same oh my goodness you've only got to look on the news to see all the knife crime and gang related crime that's happening in London at the moment like every city has its problems and I think you know when you visit you just have to be street savvy and you have to pay attention to your surroundings to where you're going how you're getting about all of this stuff like just be aware of your personal safety but don't let that deter you from enjoying this city because there is a lot to see and do here and I think sometimes the problems that tourists can face here are because they're just not aware or they don't pay enough attention to themselves or to their belongings. Oh, this is another good question. Do you regret moving or was it the best thing you did? This is twofold. I don't know if this is from London or from Italy. We'll talk about it in both parts. Moving from Salerno to Palermo, we'll, we'll address this section first. Definitely the best decision I ever made because I've definitely outgrown Salerno. I was very much sleepwalking my way through life there and I didn't come to Italy to have that experience. So I definitely felt the time was right for me to leave Salerno. No regrets there at all. In terms of do I regret leaving London to move to Italy? Absolutely no. Like I have grown and developed tenfold since making this change in my life. And although there were some stumbling blocks along the way that I've had to overcome, by far, this was the best decision I've ever made. I wouldn't be sitting here now talking to you, answering this question, if I hadn't been bold enough to leave London to move to Italy. Like, it's as simple as that, really. I followed my dreams. I pushed myself out of my comfort zone. I've grown, changed, evolved, developed as a person. Yeah, by far, no regrets at all. Okay, my next question, is it difficult to get a visa in Italy? I'm from the UK, my partner lives in Rome. I want to move in with him. Oh my goodness, I don't really know the answer to this question properly because I moved here pre-Brexit and so I was fortunate to not have to go through this process. Now you will definitely have a few more hurdles to overcome if this is what you want to do. I recommend looking on the gov.uk website um, for living in Italy. They have a section all about moving to and living in Italy and that will give you a starting point from which you can begin your research as to whether or not it's going to be possible for you. Certainly now, if you want to live here permanently, yes, you will need some kind of a visa, whether that be a study visa or a work visa but then you have to overcome the hurdles of being sponsored by a company. And even within that, there are limitations because there are only a certain number of visas that can be issued in any given period of time. And also there are certain requirements within those visas, as in there isn't somebody else within a European country that could do the same job, for example. So please do your research. That's the only thing I can suggest um, pre-Brexit, it was simple to move here. Post-Brexit, not, not so much. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you definitely need to spend some time researching it. So my next question is, am I still teaching English? And the answer is yes, yes I am. I love teaching, I have a real passion for it. And also I like to be able to help students to open their minds both to the possibilities that language learning can bring, but also to the language learning process itself. I think one of the biggest faults that I've identified in the Italian education system, the state education system especially, in the four years that I've been teaching here in Italy has been the way that English is taught in state schools. It is often taught by teachers who are not mother tongue, not to say that that is a problem necessarily, but of course there are going to be aspects of pronunciation and the little intricacies of the language that perhaps if you're not a mother tongue speaker you don't really fully understand or know about um, it's like me deciding to suddenly teach italian although i can learn italian to a c1 or c2 level i'm never ever going to fully understand the intricacies of the language because it isn't my mother tongue language so there's that aspect to it but that aside english to me is taught in a way that doesn't motivate students considering that students are learning a language that is not their own 
they learn literature texts from authors like Shakespeare. Shakespeare is an incredible, incredible writer. But let's be clear, his works are over 400 years old. That type of language is just not used anymore. And so if you want to teach English in a relatable way, you need to be incorporating contemporary fiction. Fiction that students can both relate to, but also understand and learn vocabulary from. Like, yes, there are definitely themes of love and betrayal and things that we can learn from from Shakespeare's work, but the practicalities of his language are such that I just feel it's not relevant in today's society for students who are learning a second language. Like I studied Shakespeare, but then I'm a mother tongue speaker. And so, you know, you would expect to study the classical writers of your country and of your language. But when you're learning a second language, I think this is a very, very difficult way to begin. And so there are certain aspects that I don't understand. There's a very um, strong emphasis on grammar in state schools, but then you have students who can't speak because yes, they know how to form a sentence in past perfect, but they don't have the vocabulary to ask a basic question. And so my method and approach to teaching is very much that you need to have both because yes, you might know the grammar rules, but if you don't have the vocabulary, you can never apply the grammar and you can never speak in everyday situations. And so this is my thought process around teaching here in Italy. It's definitely an eye opener. And it's definitely, to, in my opinion, very sad that so many people here have had such a negative experience learning English at school, which means they just don't speak the language now or they consider it to be too difficult. And so, you know, I'm here to help students and I enjoy what I do. Of course, I have other passions as well. I love creating videos. I love writing. Um, I'm a very creative person, full stop. But yes, teaching is something that I enjoy and I enjoy making the little difference that I can um, in terms of people's attitudes towards learning the language. My next question was one that I really had to sit with for some time and it was like, Am I happy? Am I happy? And the person who wrote this was actually like, take your time to answer this question because it's a really serious one. And I was like, yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. This question was so profound. It was literally like a splash of cold water in my face. And I was like, am I happy? And my answer is two parts. Yes and no. I'm happy because I know that I've achieved some incredible things here in Italy. Like to even live here and not speak the language, to have been working here from the moment I stepped off the plane to now not fully speaking the language, to have extracts from my book on the streets of Palermo translated into Italian, not speaking the language, to have published a book here in Italy in the first place, not speaking the language, to have formed friendships and relationships here in Italy, not fully speaking the language. Oh my goodness, there are so many things that I'm happy that I've achieved. And I've achieved them because I pushed myself out of my comfort zone and in a way that has made me happy because I've definitely become a much better person as a result. So what doesn't make me happy at the moment? I think it is the fact that I don't feel 100% fulfilled. I love what I do. I love my job, I love teaching but I know that there's more that I want to do. I love creating. Like the true essence of my joy at the moment is in creating. I love to write. I love to create videos for this channel. I love to take photographs. I love to create in general. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time at the moment to be able to dedicate to that. And so that in a way leads to feelings of unhappiness because when you truly, truly want to do something, but you are limited in some way to be able to do that, it's, yeah, it's frustrating. And so I think the majority of my life, I'm happy, but there's that aspect that feeling that I'm not living life 100% fulfilled, that makes me feel a little unhappy. So I have to find that balance and I've referenced it in some other videos um, in the past couple of months that I need to find a balance because I don't want to burn out essentially, but also 
I want to follow my desire. Like, this is why I moved here. I followed a desire to move to Italy. And I know when you follow your desire, you're so much happier than if you don't. So, yes, this is my very real and honest answer. And I did take my time to consider it before I answered the question because happiness, there isn't a one fits all definition for happiness. Happiness means something very different to every single person. And, you know, I definitely don't link my happiness to material possessions or people anymore in the same way that I might have done previously, because I know that material possessions and people can come and go. Like, you cannot attach your happiness to those. Happiness has to be something that you find within yourself and for yourself. And so my happiness is attached to my feelings of worthiness and also my feelings of fulfillment. And so that is where my happiness stems from and this is why I want to be more fulfilled in my life because that will definitely make me feel more happy um, and kind of feed into other aspects of my life as well. Moving on to my community tab on YouTube, I had a question from Johnning Rome, um, how do I handle the bureaucracy in Italy? Oh my goodness. I handle it with as much patience as I can muster because honestly the bureaucracy process here in Italy to me is extremely archaic and unnecessarily complicated and to me it's like wow stepping back 200 years like for me just the way that things are done here is just terribly old-fashioned um you have to have lots of patience Definitely at the moment, I'm navigating some bureaucracy delays to do with my residency, which are extremely frustrating. And I feel like pulling my hair out because you can't book an appointment. Nobody responds to emails. You can't go to the office. Like, oh, everything is just unnecessarily complicated and stressful. But with patience, I know it can all resolve itself. So yes, you have to have patience. It's the only way you can handle the bureaucracy. Get a PEC email address is the biggest piece of advice I can give you because a PEC email is like a registered uh, receipt, if you like. So if you ever had any problems in the future, like somebody says you didn't send an email, they didn't hear from you, you can provide evidence that you sent the email. And so it's definitely worth getting a PEC email if you don't already have one. Aruba is a good company. Um, I pay maybe just 10 euros for the year to have my PEC email, but it's definitely something you need because you need to be able to evidence everything here in Italy and make sure you keep everything. Like, I'm not even joking, every single piece of paper that you were issued from like a, a government office, anything, you must keep everything because that is your proof later on if there are ever any problems because um, next year I've been living here for five years and I can apply for permanent residency so you can bet your bottom dollar I've got every piece of paperwork that I need to prove that I've been living here for five years because I've worked hard to get everything in order so patience, organisation, evidence in everything, getting a PEC email these are some things that you can do to help to improve your experience but you just have to understand that every region in Italy does things differently. So, for example, I had a much smoother process, in my opinion, with bureaucracy in Salerno than what I'm experiencing here. But Palermo is like twice the size of Salerno. So you can kind of understand how things are different. Patience. That's the best way that you deal with bureaucracy here in Italy. OK, my next question was quite a few. Confused about Christmas presents on the 25th of December versus the 6th of January. OK, so here in Italy, there are a few different traditions compared to other parts of the world. I'll talk about like experiences compared to the UK because that's where I'm from. So the vigil, as they call it, the 24th, Christmas Eve, is traditionally like, I would suggest the most important day over Christmas. Like it's the same significance that we would give to Christmas Day in the UK. Christmas Eve is special, it's nice, but the real celebration is on Christmas Day. Whereas here, the real celebration the main part I would suggest is that vigil, it's the 24th, um, Christmas Eve. And at midnight on Christmas Eve, like going into Christmas Day, that is when the presents are opened, whereas they are opened on Christmas Day morning in the UK. The 6th of January is Epiphany and they celebrate with Bafana, which is this tradition, this witch who delivers candy or sweets to children if they've been good and traditionally coal or black colored sweets if the child has been bad 
So th this is when children wore hand stockings um, in anticipation of Bafana arriving. Um, so again, it's very different. We only hand stockings on Christmas Eve in the UK and we don't celebrate um, Epiphany in the same way in the UK either. So that is the difference in terms of presence between the 6th of January and the 25th of December. The next part of the question is, have I seen the Sicilian way of handing laundry out in colour batches? I do know that, oh my goodness, Italians in general are very good at cleaning and I've definitely learned some very nifty tips and tricks since living here in Italy. Yes, Italians do wash in particular ways and they hand their washing out in particular ways. I can't say I've noticed a lot specific colour batching, but I do notice the way that clothes are hung from the line. It's a lot different to how I used to hand my washing in the UK. And um, so I've definitely learned some tips and tricks there, but I haven't necessarily seen colour batching um, a lot. And the next part of the question, have I seen the ladies sending down their baskets from high above for someone to put a newspaper or bread in? then they wheel them back up again. Yes, I have. I see this a lot. And every time I see it, I want to try and capture it on video, but the whole thing happens so quickly, I miss the opportunity. But yes, so people who live in high rise apartments, they will often um, send the basket down to have, the other day I saw coffee, a cup of coffee from the bar being put in the basket and like heaved up like to like the second or third floor where the old man was but yes it does happen here it's very traditional and it's actually very beautiful when you see it i will do my best to capture it the next time it happens um, and share it as a youtube short if i can but yes it does happen here in sicily and it's very beautiful and it does okay my next question was where did your love for italy and the desire to live there come from i feel like i answered this at the beginning when i spoke about why i moved to italy but essentially it was from a feeling inside like an instant feeling of connection and belonging, which sounds completely crazy, and I know it doesn't sound at all logical, but sometimes the best things in life aren't logical and don't make sense to people, just to yourself. And essentially that is what has led me here. And I've looked back and I've seen different signs and synchronicities that have shown me that all along maybe I was destined to come here. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, potentially I'm going to do some research into my family history, but potentially, there may even have been some Italian ancestry like way back when. So yeah, you know, there's always reasons why we do things in life, whether we realize them at the time or not. Steve Jobs gave this beautiful analogy actually um, in his graduation speech at Stanford University in 2015. I love it so much, I always remember it very clearly. And he talks about joining the dots and he says that certain things happen in life, like you do things, you situations unfold themselves and you don't necessarily understand at the time why they happen but when you look back you are able to join those dots and understand why every single thing happened the way it did for life to unfold the way it has done and so I kind of feel my journey in Italy is all about that I'm starting to be able to look back now and join the dots and start to understand why certain things have happened and what led me here so essentially this is what brought me to Italy. I love the culture, I love the weather, I love the people, and it was just a completely different experience to what I was having in London at the time when I made the decision to move here. So I think it was just what I needed, to be honest. Okay, my next question, I'm not sure how serious it is, but I'll answer it. Are you going to visit North Africa, maybe also the desert, since it's pretty faster to reach it now? <laughs> I have no idea if I'll end up in North Africa, who knows? Yes, we definitely have more of a climate that resembles North Africa here in Sicily. I don't know if I'll reach North Africa, who knows? I've still got the whole of Sicily to explore. I've literally just been mainly in Palermo. So we'll see, who knows? I'm not ruling anything out. <laughs> My next question, when are you getting married? What? Best answer ever. What? When you don't know, what? <laughs> and here ended my little Q&A get to know me better session. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer that you'd love me to cover in a future video, comment below and I'd love your like support and subscriptions if you don't already subscribe to my channel. It honestly means the world to me. 2023, I want to grow Miss Brittley to the extreme. Like I'm so ready and your support obviously takes me to that point. So yes, I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now.